Hello everyone, welcome back to the Making a Pong with Unity game series. This is Jonathan here. And in this video, we are going to set up our Unity game scene. So in the last video, we had added all our assets to the scene. And I realized we need one more asset. Uh, we're going to need a dotted white line. So I went ahead and created that and I also put that into the Dropbox folder that was shared in the uh, last video I made. Okay, so the, I think the first thing to do here is to go to Google and actually take a look at what some of the Pong layouts look like. Because if you notice, I instinctively just dropped uh, these assets into here uh, so the paddle was on the bottom and the ball was on the top. But doing a quick Google search for some research shows that it's actually Pong is played from left to right, not up and down. So that's a good thing to know before we start creating the game. So my suggestion to you is find a Pong game that you want to emulate. And it doesn't have to look exactly like mine. Because um, if you notice, like this one here has white borders on the top and bottom, but this one here doesn't. Uh, that one does. So I, I kind of like the simple, clean look, and I think that's the type I'm gonna go with, something just very plain and basic like this. So that's gonna be my version here. Uh, you feel free to find your own. So the, uh, the first thing to do is look at this game scene and understand what we're actually looking at. So that you have some tabs at the top here, and for this uh, project, actually, we're really only going to be dealing with scene and game. Scene is where we do our editing, is where we drag and drop stuff, it's where we set things up. Game is the window we actually play in, and you'll notice it looks a little bit different, and that doesn't really look anything like a Pong game right now. Uh, you'll also notice here under the tab game, you have uh, display and it gives you some various aspect ratios and you can set your own uh, widths and heights to match various screen resolutions. Uh, by, by default here it's on 16.9 and that kind of looks like what Pong is. 16.10 uh, is a bit smaller but I'm gonna leave mine at 16.9. And the first thing I notice is that my Pong uh, paddle and ball both look a little bit too big. So there's an easy way to take care of that and I, you're probably thinking you can scale it down which is true. But I want to make sure everything is consistent. So if I click here on this Pong assets, right here under pixels per unit, you can increase this number to change how big the, all of these things are scaled by default. So I'm going to change it to 150, which uh, counterintuitively actually makes it smaller. So I hit apply, and that makes it look a little bit more along the lines of what I want to go for. Also, I, I like the having the square ball. So I'm just going to open this up and I'm going to drag this over here under Sprite where it says round ball and I'm just going to make that a square ball. And finally, well in Pong the background is definitely not blue so if we just click main camera we see that we have a background color here and we can just click that and set a more Pongish color which is perfect. So if you notice if you're in the game scene you won't be able to click and drag these things around. So I'm going to go back to the scene view where I can manipulate these objects. So if I click on the paddle, uh, just so you get a bit familiar with how this works, Unity has its own coordinate system. So if you look here under the transform as I move the paddle or the ball around, you'll see these numbers change to represent the X and Y axis. Now because this is only a 2D game, the Z isn't changing at all. Uh, but if you click here under 2D, you can actually change that to 3D, and you could see what it would look like if we wanted to change it. So you can change the Z depth even in a 2D game, and there are sometimes some uses for that. But for now, I'm just going to click 2D and leave this on here. So there's two ways we can see tell how big our game area is. One is just by dragging these objects around and looking at how those numbers change. And if I drag this to the far right, I can see the X is about uh, 9, and uh, it's about minus nine on the left. And on the Y, it's about five on the top and would be minus five in the bottom. And the other way is just to count these actual grid squares. So I can see we have started zero here in the very center. And if I position the ball to zero, zero, uh, we'll see it moves behind this little camera here. I hope if I move the paddle out of the way, there we go. And if I just count outwards, I can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It's not exactly uh, 9 wide but it, because of the aspect ratio, but it's about that. So if we want to move these things to a decent starting position, we might think about moving our player paddle. Uh, we'll say our player is going to be on the right. So we could move our X out to maybe 8 
and our y center it at zero. And then we're also gonna have to rotate it on the z position by 90 degrees to make it a good player panel. And the ball is already at the zero, zero position, which is just fine for me. Well, actually, when we put the dotted line in, it might not be, but we'll deal with that in a second. And the other thing, I'm going to rename the paddle. So up here in the upper right corner, uh, where it says Pong Assets 2, I'm just going to type paddle. And it's important you hit enter, because if you don't hit enter, that won't actually save. And this is no longer a round ball, this is a square ball. So I'm actually, I'm just going to call it ball. doesn't really matter what shape it is here. And this game object here is where we had our console Pong script attached to, which we don't need anymore. So I'm just going to remove that uh, game object from the scene. So click here and hit delete. Bye bye. And finally, I'm going to hit control D on this paddle, in which duplicates it. Now up here we have uh, options that let us manipulate these objects in the scene. So you can click the hand to drag yourself around the scene. And this second one here, which is also accessible by hitting the W key, lets us manipulate objects. Now this is the uh, computer paddle, so I'm just going to rename that. And now I am going to drag that over here. Well, actually, I'm not going to drag it. I'm just going to, because I, I want it to be the same starting position. So I'm just going to type minus 8 on the X position. And now, I, that is looking pretty good, but I'm also going to drag this dotted white line into the scene. And I'm just going to position that here at 0, 0. And it just it looks pretty good, but it's a little too wide. So I'm going to change the uh, X scale by, let's make it maybe 0.75. That's looking pretty good. Of course, uh, we can't really see our ball anymore. It, it's still there, but it's uh, hiding on top of that white dotted line. So we can also take care of that uh, in several ways. For now, let's see what's the best way to do it. Maybe I'll just scale the ball up just a little bit. 1.25, 1.25. Uh, it's just hard to see because of the color. When it's in play, that won't be much of a problem. Um, so for now, I'm actually just going to move it off just so I can see it a little better. Okay, uh, so that's looking pretty good. The other thing we want to do is add some sorting layers. So sorting layers just control the order that we see things uh, within our game. So by default, everything is here on this default sorting layer. But if you click Add Sorting Layer, you can get the option to create additional ones. So if you click this little plus icon underneath, you can create... I, I'm going to create a player level sorting layer, sorting later, sorting layer even. And I'm going to hit plus again, and I'm going to create a background sorting layer. And I'm just going to drag that on top because uh, what's ever on top is actually in the further background. Now if I click on this dotted white line, I can change default to background. And I'm going to change both paddles and the ball to player level. And those are going to be on the same level. And that might make it, the ball appear a little bit better. Let's take a look. Yeah, you, you can kind of see now that, well, it's still white on white, so it's hard to see, but you can see that it is definitely on top of that white line. Uh, finally, we need to create our uh, scores up here. So I'm just going to go to Game Object on the top panel, UI, and Text. And that's going to create a tech, uh, well, that's going to do two things. It's going to create a canvas because we can't actually create text on top of our scene. We have to create it on top of a canvas. And by default, the text is going to look really, really big. Uh, this is just because of the way the canvas is laid out. So if you click on canvas where it says screen space overlay, I'm just going to change this to screen space camera. And then it's going to have render camera none. Well, if I take this main camera, I can just drag it and drop it on top of here. And now, if we go back to our scene by double-clicking the main camera or zooming in or one of these other options, we can see that the text is uh, appropriately sized for our game scene. And we can just drag this into place and manipulate some of its settings. Well, this is a black background, so that's not going to show up very well if we leave it like that. So I'm just going to, well, I'm going to rename this first. I'm going to type, call this computer score. And I'm going to set it with a default value of 0. I'm going to change its centering options so it appears in the middle. Now if I click this box here, I can resize its uh, individual canvas. I'm going to make that fairly large. And I'm going to change its color to a bright white. 
I'm going to up its size. Oops. Why is it appearing up there like that? There we go. Just a little graphical glitch. Now it's in the center. And where it says Arial, if I click this little uh, circle next to Arial, it gives me the option to change the uh, style. So I'm going to change it to that retro font we downloaded, and I see I can make it even bigger now. Oops, if it gets too big for the canvas, it disappears. So just make sure the canvas is also an appropriate size. That might be too big. We can. I, these are easy to change, so I can play around with it if I don't like it. Okay, and now I'm just going to position it in a better place. And now I'm going to hit Control D to duplicate and move it over here. Anyway, if you'll notice, the canvas actually deals in pixels, whereas uh, the rest of Unity deals with world units. So that can get a little bit confusing sometimes. Uh, if you click here under Canvas also, you'll see that it, we can control its scaling. Uh, by default, if we check our game and then we manipulate the size, you're going to see things are going to go off of here, which we don't want. But if we change this from constant pixel size to scale with screen size, uh, then we can set either a reference resolution or we can just uh, pick expand or shrink. And there are some differences, but I'm not the best person to explain that. Uh, but basically, if you change it to expand or shrink, you're going to see things scale appropriately with the canvas. Anyways, uh, that's basically it for now. I'm just going to rename this to player score. Uh, so yes, we have essentially created our game scene. So it's just a matter of playing around with this and creating something that looks like Pong, which uh, basically is what we have done now. So uh, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Let me know if you have any questions.